and uh, talking about design. When uh, we are talking about geotechnical design, we should investigate according to the geotechnical principles used in situ testing and lab testing and uh, consider total settlement, differential settlement. And for suspended systems, most, most of the times in cities, it talks about the window cleaning anchor. And in case the height is more than eight meters, it should comply to this standard. And there is an important issue here. It is worth mentioning that every retaining wall that public has access to it should have guard rail. It seems obvious. Obviously, uh, you have to do that. But what happens is that sometimes <coughs> this is the road, for example, and uh, this is the property of your client. And you put some type of retaining wall here because you want to landscape the backyard for the client. But don't forget that this type of retaining wall is accessible by public. This is the sidewalk of the road. So you have to put railing on top. Seems obvious, but a lot of times people forget that. That's very important I will teach. One important issue that I have put a red mark in here is the slab on the ground should be completely separated from the structure. If it is designed as part of a structure, that's fine. But normally it is not. So you have the footing, you have the foundation bar, and you have the slab on ground. Make sure that you have a separation <coughs> membrane here that uh, doesn't let these two uh, interact together. Sorry, Jim, would you mind explaining the compacting and non-compacting the cardboard? Uh, generally, for a slab on ground, mm -hmm. you have to use at least 100 millimeters of granular material and you are not allowed to compact it. You can compact the ground beneath that layer, but once you get to the place that you want to pour this granular material, you, you are not allowed to compact it because we need those pores and uh, fissures inside those materials to drain the water, okay? But when it comes to garage and carport, there is uh, uh, a substantial amount of loading on top, and if you don't compact it, it will crack. If you compact it, it will lose the, the drainage uh, specifications, so they have accepted the carport and garage uh, because of that, and accessory buildings normally, they don't need this kind of elaboration. And if for any reason, hydrostatic pressure is susceptible, we have to design this slab so that as a reinforced concrete uh, member could resist this water pressure. This happens a lot and uh, they pour a slab on ground without reinforced concrete considerations and sometimes, uh, normally during March and April, the water level comes up and puts an uplift pressure under the slab and makes it crack. This is section of the building. You have a building here. This is the street. This is the first floor, okay? So you go several steps to, to go inside the house. But sometimes you have a ramp that goes to underground parking. If this happens, you should put some, time, some type of catch basin here that when the snow or rain pour down here, cannot go inside. 
one millimeter open joints. This is where a lot of people make mistakes. They see that pipes are not fitting together. They think that the guy has done the wrong thing. The court said they should have a 10 millimeter open joint. So it says that every column should be laterally supported, except when there is a crawl space and the, the height of the column is less than 600 millimeters, or there is a deck that doesn't have roof without superstructure. Is that what a superstructure is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you have posts for your deck, mm -hmm. they don't need to be laterally supported. But if they have superstructure, anything on top of them, they need to be laterally supported. This might be unrelated to the building code, but I thought the, the city, city of Toronto didn't like when we used that kind of column, like the adjustable height column. Mm -hmm. Have you ever... Well, the adjustable height column normally is used for temporary job. Right. So when you use it for a permanent job, raises twice. Mm -hmm type of uh, work that we do for wood columns. You are well aware this is the foundation wall for the column. They have made a special sitting area and in this special sitting area there is a at least a two by four or, or if the column is made of two by six this should be two by six and there are reinforcement coming out of foundation that holds this whole assembly together. And this is again the same detail. The bolts are coming out of the uh, concrete and there is a membrane here because we are not allowed to let wood and masonry or concrete touch each other. They will harm each other so there is a membrane in here numbers to make a column. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that uh, uh, the nailing is staggered, they are not in the same line, and you have to observe the uh, distances and the type of the nail that you are using, etc. And I mentioned before, if you do every detail of nailing that code asks you, you are good with the horizontal forces and the wind loads and earthquake loads. The column cannot be slimmer than the girder or the beam on top. Minimum dimension of uh, wood columns is 140 by 140, meaning you can only use 2 by 6 and uh, you have to use at least 3 of them together to make a 6 by 6. We prevent these beams from buckling. Do you have to put a membrane between the two because it's two materials? Uh, for wood, no. Uh, and uh, not only it is not needed, you are not allowed to. Why? Because you need a minimum friction between this piece of wood and this piece of metal. If uh, they can slide over each other, they don't work. So uh, that uh, membrane is only for concrete and so the, the flat piece of wood, I guess, still at, at the bottom mm -hmm. is just to uh, anchor those joists yes. to the wood, yes. right? Because otherwise you, you don't really need it. Yes. You see, the main reason that you are doing this is because you can nail this joist to this wood stream easily. Otherwise, you can bolt it to the beam, but that would need a lot of elaboration. So this is the easy way to go. Just put a strip of wood and nail the joist to this strip. This will help the beam. It, it gives the lateral support to the beam, you know? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to bend the beam, it might not bend at this axis. It, also might twist somehow. Mm -hmm. That twist is called buckling, okay? So in order to prevent buckling, we have to make sure that the top flange cannot go left and right. But then, uh, 
that piece of wood on the on the steel beam? Maybe this is a question. How do you attach this beam? You don't attach. Okay. You don't attach. But but the question that she asked was that is it necessary to put some type of membrane under the wood? Mm -hmm. You are not allowed to do that. Okay. The wood should sit right on top of the mm -hmm. steel and the friction that is here is enough to provide them from sliding. Yeah. You know, in elaborate works, for example, when there is a beam here, in bigger works, bigger spans, you do like this. This is the steel beam. We well bolts here. Okay, then put a two by six or two by four, and put the screws here. Okay. Now the joists that come can be nailed to this. One. So it is possible to do a more elaborate, more detailed job for uh, for the conditions that the part line does not apply. But if the building you are designing is within the definitions of part line, you can go easy like this. What is the definition of chimney for this section? Should be brick or concrete. So if it is the, the chimney is like uh, made of metal or something else does not apply to here. You have to go to uh, part six because uh, that goes to the appliances like that. And the height my, uh, should be less than 12 meters. And the uh, appliance or fireplace energy should be less than 120 kilowatts. So basically it is talking about a small normal size house and the fireplace, or uh, a heating boiler system, or something like that. So we are not speaking about all types of chimneys, only brick or concrete chimneys. If there is two or more fuel burning appliances, can use one chimney. And two solid burning appliances on the same floor can share one chimney. These are exceptions, otherwise you cannot share it. The solid burning appliance uh, uh, outlet comes here, and the other appliance cannot be lower than that. Should come someplace higher to use the same chimney for exhaust. Steel liners, at least 10 millimeter gap between liner and wall. So the steel liner is inside, and there's a wall holding it, but they cannot touch each other. There should be at least 10 millimeter air going around uh, the line. Fire brakes are used. Don't forget to use fire resistant uh, cement. Here says high temperature cement. Sometimes people forget. Use the fire resistant brick, but use the normal mortar. It doesn't work. Have to use high temperature cement. What happens if, if you use regular mortar with uh, fire breaks? Uh, we have a saying that we say it burns. It doesn't burn, but it loses its integrity. You can scratch it by hand. If, if it stays in contact with fire, uh, you can scratch the mortar out of the place by hand. It doesn't work. When you say fireplace accepted, you mean like accept, like you'll accept that solution, not it's an exception. It is an exception. Uh, for every chimney, you have to provide this cleaning open. But when it is the fireplace, you don't need to. Oh, okay. Because you just because clean. the fireplace itself is the yeah. Open. You have access. Obviously, this is the general shape of the uh, fireplace, and you call this this part in here. It is the heart. We will talk about heart later on. So, 
Liners could be a steel or fire brick, thickness all around at least 50 millimeters, thickness of floor only 25 millimeters. So the floor, the thickness of floor of the fireplace is could be uh, less than the thickness of the side. Use high temperature designed to prevent embers entering. So you have the fireplace here. You should have a duct that brings fresh air near opening of the fireplace, but it should have some type of uh, grid or some type of uh, mechanism that prevents sparks and uh, uh, ashes from entering into the fire. Um, what is this, uh, back walls or small chamber facing outside? Can be uh, as small as 140, but that's the thickness of it. Right. But to that, you would have to add, uh, I guess. Hmm. You see, there is, a, there is a restriction here. There is a restriction here that says the wall should be at least 190 millimeters thick. Right. Okay? But here it gives you allowance that if that side of the wall is facing outside, mm -hmm. you can reduce it. Mm -hmm. 